Here to break all of this down, we have senior Washington correspondent for Politico, Anna Palmer, and Washington Post political reporter, Ed O'Keefe. I thank you both for your time. Anna, looking now at a rancorous uh, Democratic <laughs> side of things, after we saw essentially chalk yesterday, uh, Sanders win as most thought we would see in Oregon, and a close race eventually won by Hillary Clinton there. In Kentucky, it is all now overshadowed by the events, not just in Nevada this past weekend, but uh, the Sanders' campaign response to it, the DNC's response to that response. Uh, what to make of all of this rancor? We had a lot of responses going back and forth right now. I mean, certainly what we are seeing is what you actually expect more on the Trump side of things, right? This kind of argument that the Sanders campaign continues to make is that this is a rigged political system, that what happened in Nevada is because of party establishment not loosening the rules and not allowing for a fair uh, fight in terms of, you know, allowing his delegates to be at the state party, uh, you know, convention. I think what is going to happen here, though, is you're starting to see some of the liberal, you know, kind of establishment voices, the thinkers in the party start to turn on Sanders to say it is time for, you know, him to step down or talk about how this is a message that this isn't, you know, going to, he could really have some of the blame if Trump ends up being president. Meanwhile, Ed, uh, we did see again the Sanders campaign uh, respond uh, half-heartedly in the minds of some. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the DNC chairman, then called his response anything but acceptable. And it really, if nothing else, Ed, seems to offer up this snapshot of the tightest of tight ropes now that has to be walked by Hillary Clinton, who really couldn't come out and criticize her opponent or his supporters, who she'll need come November. Right. And I, th I think she's in the, in the trickier position here. Look, anyone shocked that Bernie Sanders isn't taking cues from the chairman of the DNC and from Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, among others, uh, doesn't understand that up until last year, basically, he, he is not a Democrat. He was not a Democrat. He's, he's been an independent in Congress, he's never taken cues from the party. He has no uh, no history of loyalty to them, uh, and I I think the fact that this continues is frankly just consistent with the way he's comported himself throughout his career. He's an independent-minded guy. Uh, he's looking out for uh, for his interests, and and he doesn't necessarily feel any obligation. Uh, to help out the party. He says he will campaign for Secretary Clinton if it comes to that. His wife says that as well. And we'll see if that indeed happens. But certainly between now and the end of these contests, it seems to be full steam ahead for him. And he's had multiple opportunities to respond to these kinds of incidents, whether it was the Bernie bros, mm -hmm. those that have been cyber stalking Clinton supporters and superdelegates. And now this situation in Nevada, which is one of the most egregious we've seen, uh, you know, over and over again, he has perhaps said, let's not do that, but never as vociferously, certainly, as party leaders would like. And for all the talk of potential chaos uh, over these last months in Cleveland come July, apparently now it is going to shift uh, that potential chaos uh, to Philadelphia come July.